Hi, I'm Martin Cole, and I'm the Science Director for Agriculture and Food at Australia's National Science Agency, the CSIRO, and I'm the current chair of the International Commission on the Microbiological Specifications for Food, or ISMSF. And it's a pleasure to spend a few minutes with you today to explain the statistical basis of sampling plan, operational characteristic curves, and how the performance of a sampling plan can be related to the level of a hazard controlled and to other risk management metrics such as food safety objectives. The operating characteristic curve describes the probability of accepting a lot for a given sampling plan against the proportion of lots that are defective. The slope of the curve gets steeper the more samples that are taken. And here we're taking two or n is two, five or 10 samples. In other words, the sampling plan gets more stringent the more samples we take, and the lower the probability is that we will accept a lot, even, it is, even if it is unsuitable for a given proportion that's defective. Taking a sample is very much like tossing a coin in the air, where the result can be heads or tails. In sampling, the results can be presence or absence of a pathogen. And so the operating characteristic curve can therefore be constructed based on simple probability st statistics. And in the next few slides, I'll just take you through how this works in a series of pictures. So the diagram along the bottom represents 10 lots of foods with a different proportion of defects shown as the red dots, from none out of 10 on the left-hand side, all the way to all of them being defective, or 10 out of 10 red dots on the right. So in this first example, if we take no, ex no samples, then the probability of accepting a defective lot is one, or 100%. If we take one sample, then the probability of accepting the lot is exactly proportional to the proportion that, it's, that is defective. So if there's one out of 10 defective, or 0.1 proportion defective, then the probability of accepting that lot is 0.9, or 90%. As the proportion increases to 0.2, then the probability is 0.8, or 80%, 0.3, 70%, and so on and so forth. OK, so let's take a look then if we take two samples. Using our example of 1 out of 10 defective, or 0.1 defective, if we take two samples, each time we take a sample, it has the same chance of being accepted at 90% or 0.9 probability. So the probability of accepting the lot if we take two samples is just a product of this. So in other words, 0.9 times 0.9, which gives us 0.81. Now, the same principle applies if we take three samples, then it's just 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9, or 0.73. And this is how the slope of the curve increases as we take more and more samples. Now, eventually, when we take so many samples, in this case, 30 samples, we start to approach uh, what we term as the idealized situation. This is where, as soon as even one out of the 10 is defective, then we have an extremely low probability that the lot will be accepted. So hopefully this has helped to demystify a little bit operating characteristic curves and to show you that really they're just based on simple probability statistics. What I'd like to do now is to move on to how we can relate the performance of a sampling plan to the level of a hazard that is controlled. Now in the normal way that we express the performance of sampling plans in a table, uh, for a lot which is 2% defective, even when we take 60 samples, we still have a 0.3 probability or 30% chance that we'll accept the lot even if it's defective, in this case 2%. Now the main problem of describing the performance of a sampling plan in this way is that as a microbiologist, you know, I would like to be able to understand the performance of a sampling plan in terms of the level or concentration of a pathogen that could be detected by a given plan, which is really much more meaningful in terms of risk. Also, we want to be able to express the performance of a given plan to other risk management metrics, such as food safety objectives, which is the level of a hazard at the point of consumption that achieves the appropriate level of protection. So the issue is how could we relate the performance of presence or absence testing and a sampling plan to the level or concentration of a hazard that would be detected with a given chance or probability. And this is the approach we used. First, in most cases, the distribution of counts of microorganisms are usually skewed. 
and can usually be expressed as a log normal distribution. And if the food is well mixed and reasonably homogeneous, then the distribution will be tighter and have a lower standard deviation. Second, based on the log normal distribution, we can determine the proportion defective for a given mean count. And then third, using the operating characteristic curve, we can relate the mean count to the probability of acceptance. And what I thought I'd do is to try and illustrate this visually with a series of animations. So here's a plot which now relates the uh, probability uh, de defective uh, against a log colony forming units per gram scale. And for the purpose of this, we're going to have a limit of three or a thousand colony units per gram. Now, if the mean concentration of counts is down here, say at one log CFU or 10 per gram, then the whole of the curve is on this side and there are no defectives. But as we increase the mean count and move the distribution to the right, then we start to increase the proportion that's defective until eventually all of the samples are defective. So we can now plot out the proportion defective for a given mean count. So here we are, we're just moving the distribution to the right hand side and we can now build a curve relating proportion defective to the mean count. So, so far so good, but we're interested in relating the probability of accepting a lot in relation to the mean count. But based on the operating characteristic curve that I talked about earlier, for a given proportion defective, we can calculate the probability of acceptance. So for each proportion defective, we can, then, we can now convert that to the probability of acceptance and, now, and then link that to the mean concentration, which is what we're interested in. So now, we can relate the performance of sampling plans to the mean concentration of microorganisms that could be detected at a given probability. So what can we do with that? Well, here's an example from the ISMSF cases. But now we have, when we have the increasing stringency from the top left of the cases to the bottom right, we can also see now in this in terms of the mean concentration of organisms that would be detected with a 95% probability. Now, if you'd like to know more about this work, you can find uh, a lot of the principles described in the following papers. And also, fortunately, to make it easier, the ISMSF has created a, a web a spreadsheet tool uh, that does all of the calculations for you. And this can be downloaded on the ISMSF web page. So to conclude, operating characteristic curves are based on simple probability statistics, can be used to determine the probability that a lot will be accepted for a given proportion defective. The ICMSF has developed a new approach that relates the performance of the sampling plan to the level of hazard that can be detected. Finally, this is important because it relates it to other risk management metrics and supports the use of microbiological criteria and testing in the verification that a food safety objective has been achieved. Thank you. <laughs>